how we would sort a set of data into different what we will call classes. And so in this case we were looking at reaction times and reflex times for different ages. We can see that I've already sorted this table in ascending order with respect to age. So our youngest age is 4 and our oldest age is 69. So with respect to my groups, what would be some appropriate age groups? Um, one way we can do this, we can, we can off on the side here is just write ages. And I'm going to write that these are classes. In other words, we're going to split them up into subgroups. And one easy way to do this would maybe be something like 0 up to but not including 5 years old. Um, the next class then would be like 5 up to but not including 10. 10 up to but not including 15. 15 up to but not including 20. And we can keep going through this scheme here as a matter of fact. Um, you know, 30 to 35, 35 to 40, 40 to 45. 45 to 50, 50 to 55, and 55 to 60. Um, in this case here, I noticed that a couple of my cells were just a little off on the side there. So I'm actually going to grab all of these that I just manufactured. And what I'd like to do is center justify them here. So get them kind of in the middle. And I like to, if I go up to this cell here, you can hit you know bold or control B, and that'll bold that for you here. Um, these would be like my groups here. I could just as easily have chosen groups from like 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, or maybe like 0 to 20, 20 to 40, 40 to 60. So you want to just kind of find a good balance between things here. I think one thing that's worth mentioning is that for each of my classes, it's always going to be the lowest data point up to but not including that next one. So when I talk about ages 0 up to and not including 5, I mean like 0 through 4 there. Okay. What we're going to put over to the right of ages is uh, our mean reaction time. So mean reaction time. And this is going to be in seconds. And I'm going to move over a cell. And I'm going to write mean reflex time as well. And this is also going to be in seconds. One thing you might want to do for yourself is if you highlight these three columns up top, all three of them, if I were to now put my cursor here on this kind of spacer, I can space this out, oops, undo. I can space this out and it's going to keep all three of those columns having the same amount of space in each one. And I'm interested in highlighting these and bolding those as well, just so I can make this like a table. The last thing that I'm going to recommend you do, and we can just do this by clicking within this top left cell and dragging through the bottom right cell here. You should have a frame tool. And I like to put it in so that there's borders around everything here, but this is going to help us organize our data. So in this video, you should have seen that we can split our data up into different classes of equal widths and how to set up a table so that you can organize your data.